Hello, this is Anne McQueen, writer and advisor from McQueen Philanthropic. I'm speaking with you today on behalf of Animating Democracy, a program of Americans for the Arts. I'm working with Animating Democracy to create a series of papers and podcast interviews featuring the stories of grant makers that address their mission to create social change by supporting arts organizations and artists. The series hopes to inform, inspire, and activate funders to support arts and cultural activities as a creative strategy to achieve goals such as advancing social justice, building and developing communities, and increasing civic engagement. Joining me today is Stephen Huddert, President and CEO of the J.W. McConnell Family Foundation, which funds programs throughout Canada from its base in Montreal. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you, Anne. Um, so the McConnell Family Foundation was launched more than 75 years ago. How does its legacy uh, affect your work today? Well, I think the uh, the original philanthropic vision behind the the founding of this uh, this foundation was that at a time of great uh, social need, this was uh, after all in the the depths of the depression, that uh, philanthropic contribution to to social well being provides a sense of hope and possibility around uh, and to, particularly directed to people who are the most vulnerable and excluded, and and also I think uh, gives a sense that creatively working with uh, with resources, we can imagine and uh, propose better futures to ourselves. So I think that vision is still very much alive today. A, uh, the work that we do has evolved from a more transactional type of granting to the, the major civic institutions, the universities, hospitals, uh, symphonies, and so on, to um, a more engaged type of granting that uh, uses a, a variety of approaches to test new ways of getting things done, to learn from those, and to, to take risks that are, in other ways, inaccessible to, to governments uh, and, or, or to private sector uh, uh, players, actually. And so we do a lot of work in what we call the field of social innovation. And this is a place where we're able to take risks, to work with partners, uh, to introduce this sense that working together and I want to particularly bring the arts into this, there's a creative component to this, that we can uh, imagine and co-create uh, better futures for all of us. And what do the arts look like in that context? Well, it's a, uh, we're talking here particularly about the what we would call the, the social purpose arts or arts for social inclusion. And uh, we really stumbled on this, I would say, in an effort to, uh, back in the end of the 1990s, to protect the role of the arts in education out of an innate sense that it was important to uh, that education be more about uh, uh, educating the whole human being than just reading, writing, and, uh, and, and sort of responding to test scores. Our effort to do that involved uh, support for something called Art Smarts, uh, which is an arts-infused education model whereby the arts are used to teach a different subject. Uh, so it could be physics uh, being taught in conjunction with the symphony orchestra, could be um, history taught through mural making. But essentially, what we were doing was using the art artists and using artist-teacher collaborations to deliver the curriculum in ways that would be engaging for students. And the interesting thing that we discovered was that this approach was particularly relevant and indeed exciting uh, for teachers and students and communities in, um, in vulnerable settings. So in inner city schools, in remote Aboriginal schools, we could see that this method of teaching was just enlivening uh, imagination in bringing about levels of engagement and achievement that just weren't possible by any other means. And so with that evidence, and, and it was anecdotal at first, we began to look more closely at how uh, engaging the arts in, and working through the arts to achieve social change, social change might advance the Foundation's broader goals of engaging Canadians in uh, building a society that is inclusive, sustainable, and resilient. Mm -hmm. And, and what, uh, can you tell me some examples of other grant-making that you've done in the arts? Uh, by all means. We've done... Um, a number of, of other things. We're supporting the, uh, the the introduction of El Sistema, the Venezuelan youth orchestra model, into Canada. 
um, the beginning with the New Brunswick Youth Orchestra, which uh, currently has 600 kids in low-income neighborhoods uh, studying uh, using this method of uh, learning music. But what's actually happening there is that the participation in an orchestra, in orchestral settings, is uh, providing these kids with an opportunity to overcome the effects that uh, the stress of poverty imposes on the developing brain. So kids participating in this program are uh, spending two, three hours a day, five or six days a week, practicing their instruments in uh, ensembles with uh, their, their, their fellow students under excellent tutelage and developing a, a kind of uh, confidence and ability and, and recognition of their own abilities and, and, and potential in ways that uh, overcome the, the social isolation and the, the neurological deficit that kids in poverty often experience. So that's that's one example and one that we're looking forward to to scaling up across Canada, although scaling is always a challenge and in Canada even more so because we have a we're a federation as opposed to a, a state with we don't have a national education uh, ministry. So uh, it means doing it over and over again in 10 different provinces and territories. Mm. Uh, another example would be uh, we're supporting uh, some work being uh, led by Concordia University here in Montreal that involves students uh, operating a community studio in a low-income neighborhood that uh, creates uh, opportunities for those students to work in partnership with uh, local artists, uh, could be senior citizens, uh, street-involved youth, um, low-income families, and so on, in operating the studio and in producing work that is often of surprisingly high quality. It's celebrated in a monthly uh, uh, opening. There's a community garden that the community has put in place. There are musical performances and all kinds of things going on around this uh, place that's called the Art Hive. Um, and this is a model that we're interested in. In fact, are supporting uh, the dissemination of that across the country. A couple of other things I should mention. The, mm -hmm. the National Theatre School of Canada... Uh, we've given an endowment to in order to create uh, smaller endowments at community foundations across the country that allow graduates of the school in their first or second year after graduation to access those small funds that they need to organize a production. They have to find a community partner uh, to work on a social issue of some kind. They have to find a mentor who will work with them to provide them with uh, professional oversight. And I would say of the, the 150 to 200 productions that have been financed this way, uh, the work is of extraordinarily high quality. There are a number of these that have gone on to New York, to Europe, to festivals uh, across Canada and North America. And uh, it seems to us that we're filling a gap in that space after uh, kids graduate from a professional arts school often with a very strong social conscience or desire to get involved in social issues. And, and so far, the work is proving that uh, there's a, a nice match there between um, community need and, and the capacity of young graduating artists. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting way of, of um, making small grants, uh, because clearly you, you, most of uh, McConnell's focus on national initiatives means that it's making relatively few but very large long-term investments. Yeah, that's true. I think the two things there are, are relatively few and long-term. Um, you know, we try to design our initiatives so that they have um, local relevance and accessibility, which in the case of the theater school grant or the, uh, the grant to the Art Hive project, uh, there's often an intensely local component. But we find that there's enormous value in uh, putting those or framing those or situating them within a national initiative so that... Uh, National initiatives aren't just kind of floating up there in the sky somewhere. They're connected to local practice, and local projects aren't uh, simply little isolated uh, projects. They have, they're taking place within a, a larger framework within which evaluation is possible, and you know, it's possible to start talking about policy change and impact on a larger funding ecosystem because you've got uh, enough critical mass to show uh, evidence of effect and uh, and geographic uh, reach and so on. Um, but still, you're only uh, making about $20 million worth of grants a year uh, in all sectors um, and across the nation. Uh, how, how, how would 
how do, would you describe your thinking behind these networks to that gets you to such impact? Well, there's a couple of things. I think one is, um, you know, we are into these uh, projects for a long time, so that means typically five to ten years, and we would argue that it takes that long to see uh, systemic change, and so, um, you know, our grants are, are designed to, um, you know, work that way. The other thing is that we've learned, you know, at, at, with some difficulty uh, that um, we need to, when we start something like this, we're actually looking at a partnership relationship. So we've moved from being a, a, a kind of iconoclastic or monolithic funder that just does what it wants to, to one that works actively to um, to find partners for you know the major initiatives that we get involved in, so that our $20 million a year is leveraged several times over with increasingly uh, contributions from other foundations, from private sector partners, and, and from governments in some cases. So. Uh, in order to change the system that we're looking at, we need to engage the, the system actors at the outset rather mm -hmm. than after the fact when people will often look at a program and say, well, that's your foundation's program. We're going to do something else. Uh, involving them at the beginning or close to the beginning, uh, I think, actually generates much better results and leverages those uh, scarce resources. Mm -hmm. And so what's next? How, how are you going to be expressing this in the arts? Well, there's a few things. Uh, we're quite interested in what we would call platform strategies uh, that uh, enable um, a number of players to come together and, while acting with a degree of autonomy, contribute to uh, a larger uh, landscape, if you will. Um, and you know, we're, we're particularly with the the Sistema project that I mentioned. I think mm -hmm. we're, uh, you know, we have a a potential national partner who would uh, act as the host organization and organize professional development, uh, tours, exchanges, and so on, as well as a set of local players who can uh, be counted upon to secure local resources and partnerships for the, uh, the advancement of their individual programs. Now, that particular initiative hasn't landed yet. We're still working our way through it, but that I think describes the kind of process we're looking at, which is to find um, at the national level a partner or partners that would support things at that level, but also to create the conditions for local and regional players to step up and feel that they're part of something larger while giving them the incentive and indeed the requirement that they, they build up their own local partnerships and networks. Hmm. I would also say that there's a you know we're also looking at the role of of arts and social purpose arts as catalysts in a broader movement towards civic engagement and uh, an economic shift that we believe is important for communities to be looking at at a time of straightened resources and uh, other challenges that um, you know we've just published this paper with uh, 37 other co-authors called The Art of Resilience and the Resilience of Art that uh, describes or begins to describe the role that the arts can play in helping society to transition to more sustainable and resilient states. Uh, that means involving citizens in co-creating uh, new visions for their neighborhoods and communities and cities. Uh, it involves support for artists as artists and residents to help to animate those kinds of processes. and. We do have in Quebec uh, a, a fairly strong cultural sector with whom we're doing work on that issue. For example, we're supporting an organization called uh, uh, Culture pour tous, Culture for All, which is testing this model of artists and residents in a number of smaller communities across the province. And uh, we're also supporting something called Culture Days, which operates across Canada as a platform for a, a national celebration of culture when cultural organizations of all sizes open their doors free to the public for a weekend, um, and then looking at how we might extend some of those activities that have emerged around that to year-round activities. Hmm. Um, well, thank you, Stephen, for sharing your work with the uh, J.W. McConnell Family Foundation. It really is an amazing uh, range of activities. Um, and uh, a great learning opportunity for American foundations as well. Um, thanks for, for talking about it here. 
A pleasure, and I have to say, we certainly look at we, we look to our American colleagues for a lot of great models and ideas, whether it's around art, arts infused education with Cape and Chicago, or uh, art and urban renewal with the Municipal Art Society in New York, uh, and many others. We've had a, a lot of productive conversations, and so we look forward to continuing to uh, in, be involved in learning exchanges and, and partnerships mm-hmm. with American foundations. Great. It certainly is a a fruitful field. Um, Listeners can read more about uh, this work and other foundations' grant-making in the arts on the Animating Democracy website at animatingdemocracy.org. The site also includes a number of other resources, including a directory of funders doing this work, papers about evaluation, and essays on arts-based community development, civic engagement, and more. Thank you for listening.